Welcome to Worship for Sunday, February 27th, 2022, here at First Presbyterian Church of Gardner, Kansas. This Sunday is also Transfiguration Sunday, the last Sunday before Lent begins. There are two scripture passages today. The first is the familiar passage from Exodus 3, selected verses, which includes the call of Moses and the burning bush, verses 1 through 7 and 10 through 15. Hear now God's word for you. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. Moses led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. Moses looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that Moses had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then God said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. God said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. As Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. And skipping down a few verses, God continues, so come. I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. God said further, thus shall you say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. The second reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 28 through 36, the story of the Transfiguration. Now, about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while Jesus was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to Jesus. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now, Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him just as they were leaving him. Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah, not knowing what he had said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified, so they entered the cloud, as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. This reading is blessed by God for our hearing and our understanding. 
May we receive it with all of God's grace. Transfiguration Sunday is always the last Sunday of Epiphany, the last Sunday before Lent begins. This year, Lent begins this Wednesday with Ash Wednesday. As we heard in today's reading from the Gospel of Luke, uh, Jesus went up on a mountain with three of his disciples and something mysterious and miraculous happened. We're not even quite sure what happened or how it happened. Bright colors, uh, blazing lights, mysterious figures, unusual revelations, a voice from heaven, a cloud. We really don't understand the event, the transfiguration of Jesus, and, and maybe that's the point. The season of Epiphany is all about revelation, God revealing, seeing God, understanding God, knowing God as revealed in Jesus Christ. On this last Sunday of Epiphany, the season of Revelation, we're reminded that even though Jesus points us toward God and shows us who God is, there is still, still so much that we cannot understand. God is mystery, magnificent, transcendent, awesome, infinite, eternal, beyond our imaginations. God is great, even though we experience the love and the presence of God, we can never fully grasp all that God is. We can never know everything there is to know about God. The transfiguration story marks our turning from Epiphany to Lent. Uh, during Lent, we try to improve our uh, relationship with God. We think about our walk with Jesus and our commitment to God and and learning to be the best that we can possibly be by God's grace. We usually do that uh, by modeling our lives after Jesus, following Jesus Christ. During Lent, uh, sometimes people add prayers or devotions or study or service or, or something else to help our focus and our faith. Uh, sometimes people give up something for Lent, again, for the same purpose, to try to be a better person or to draw clo closer to Jesus. This year, during Lent, uh, I will be offering a sermon series using the seven sayings of Jesus about who Jesus is, uh, which are scattered throughout the Gospel of John, and they are often called the I Am sayings. Uh, Jesus says, I am the bread of life, I am the true vine, I am the light of the world, so on, several of them, seven of them. Uh, you've heard these sayings, probably. Uh, maybe you've even studied these sayings, these uh, I am sayings of Jesus before. They, they each reveal something, a little bit about who God is through Jesus Christ, how we know God through Jesus Christ. The first two words of each of these sayings is, I am. And this points directly to God, reminding us that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. The Hebrew name for God is Yahweh, and we heard it in Exodus. The name Yahweh can be translated, I am, or as the reading from Exodus said, I am who I am. Uh, but it's, it's more than that, and that doesn't capture the whole translation. It's not just the present tense, I am. It is also the past and the future. So I am who I am, I was who I always was, and I will be who I will be. Who I am now, I will always be. In other words, God, uh, we, we can know God because God is with us. God is, and God reveals truth to us. I am. God is. The reading from Exodus is one of the, the the times, one of the many times in the Bible, that the name of God, Yahweh, I am, is revealed. In this case, to Moses. Uh, in the story, God called Moses to free God's people from slavery. So when the name I am in Exodus says, I will always be who I am right now, who is God? Who is God with Moses at that moment? I am who I am. God is a God of relationship, 
a God who is present right here in front of you, a God you can call on, a God you can talk with, a God who, ca who cares about people in trouble, a God who saves people, a God to whom people belong, a God who calls us to care, a God who sends us to care, but, but also a God who goes with us on that mission out into the world to save God's people. God says, I am with you. I will always be with you. I will give you everything you need. I will save. I am, God says. You will know I am with you, because that's what Moses was asking. You will know I am with you because I'm with you right now. I will answer you, talk with you, bless you, empower you, and I will send you to love others. You will not have to have proof that I am there because I will be there with you. I'm not sending you out to a mission far away from me. I will be with you in every mission I give you. I will always be with you. I will be with you always. Not just to Moses, not just at that time, but always. It's a repeated promise throughout the Bible. I will be with you always, God says. Jesus promises the same. I will be with you. I will always be with you. I am. The story of the transfiguration is sometimes hard for us to understand. Um, all the mystery and magnificence of it. Uh, it uses a lot of symbolism to point to a deeper meaning. Jesus goes up on a mountain. Throughout history, the mountaintop, high and lifted up, as high as we can reach, is the traditional place of meeting God, reaching up as high as we can reach to be with God, and God comes to be with us. As the disciples are watching Jesus, Two figures from Israelite history come and appear before Jesus, with Jesus, talking to Jesus, chatting about what Jesus is about to do in Jerusalem. That is, Moses and Elijah appear with Jesus. The original readers of the gospel would have understood the significance of those particular people, Moses and Elijah. Moses represents the Old Testament, the old law of God, the word of God revealed as a way of life. Elijah represents the Old Testament prophets, those who speak to God and for God to humanity, calling us to live that word of God responsibly and consistently. Moses and Elijah together represent the old covenant, the old faith, the law and the prophets, it was called. The law and the prophets, all that Israelite faith, the Jewish faith, holds most dear. Together, they represent all that has gone before Jesus. And meeting with Jesus, that means a whole new way of knowing God has begun in Jesus Christ. The gospel readers would understand that when, they, when these representatives of the law and the prophets met with Jesus, on the mountain type, a place of God, when they met with Jesus, this was a sign that something new and wonderful had begun in the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus was fulfilling all that had gone before, all the law and all the prophets, but at the same time, moving forward into a new development of faith. God was beginning a new covenant a, way, a new way of relating, a new reality for the entire world, a new relationship with everyone starting over. This meeting on this mountaintop signaled God coming to us in a whole new personal and permanent way in Jesus Christ. Beyond law, beyond prophets, Jesus gave us access to God. Jesus gave us an ongoing personal relationship with God. To follow Jesus would be to know God in a whole new way, in a whole new, more personal way. The Transfiguration brings all that history of the Old Testament, all the, all the ways God has related to people in the past, 
And God brings that relationship forward into the person of Jesus Christ. The point, or, or one of the many points of this odd little story of transfiguration, one of the points is to say Jesus is the fulfillment of that covenant relationship with God. Jesus is the fulfillment of all that has gone before and all that is yet to be. Jesus brings history and future together, humanity and divinity together, hope and promise together. Jesus is the one in whom God is fully revealed, the great I am. Over the next few weeks of Lent, we will explore who Jesus is, who Jesus says, I am. In order to understand and to grow closer to the fullness of all that God is, and in order to personally grow in grace, that we may become all that God calls us to be. Lent begins on Ash Wednesday, with ashes and communion, with introspection and confession, with prayer and penitence, with spiritual discipline and the, and the urge to try to be our best as gifted and graced by God. If you remember nothing else this year, remember the God who is named I Am. God says, I am who I am now with you. I will always be who I am now with you, loving you. Remember the great I am. God is with you. Christ is for you. Remember and be blessed. The great I am is with you now and will remain with you always. Thanks be to God. Amen.